Hello and welcome to our introduction video for the interactive poster session. The name of the presentation is 3D modeling using aerial oblique images with close range UAV based data for single objects. My co authors are Thomas Orlik and Etai Ben Schechter from Skyline Software, and I'm Gerhard Kemper from GGS. I'm your presenter today. The topics of our presentation. The test site Wissembourg in France, aerial oblique projects flown with the oblique imaging system L from GGS, planning, capturing, 3D modeling of this data, aerial data captured using UAS, combined data processing, results, conclusion, and outlook. Where is Wissembourg? Wissembourg is a historical city in the region of Grand Est, Alsace, in France. It's situated directly on the border to Germany. You can see it here. Here is Paris, here is Belgium, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Karlsruhe, quite in the center of Europe. Wissembourg has many historical buildings. It's a very old, small, but beautiful city. It has a hilly terrain and the mountains of the Felserwald at Vosch has urban, agriculture and mountainous areas and we use the Palais Stanislas, here you see the southern facade for the UAV mission and for the reconstruction purposes. The aerial oblique project was flown with the oblique imaging system L that consists of five phase one cameras, four oblique each with 100 megapixel and one nadir with 150 megapixel. It was mounted in a stabilized mount, Aerostep XL, and of course uses GNSS, INS, and flight management system for the navigation. We planned the mission over the terrain with a 5 cm GSD, so we used Aerotopol flight planning system. You can see here the overlap analytics of this area. We used 80% overlap and 60% side lap. We've flown this mission with the aircraft, uh, Cessna 206, with a big hole, a typical surveying aircraft. We then pre-processed with Capture One the images to TIFF and processed also with Inertial Explorer the GNSS INS trajectory and the precise protection centers. And we used then the photogrammetry and 3D modeling with PhotoMesh. We used several fusers in PhotoMesh and uh, with the different tiles we came over to a very good uh, aero triangulation. You can see here the finally the flight lines and you can see here also the different images captured over a certain point. This one is the outcome of the standard aerial mission, a very detailed 3D city model and you already can see here the Palais Stanislas on the lower right hand side and uh, Pierre et Paul, the big cathedral inside of Wissembourg. Then we've flown a mission with the Aerospecter, that's our big UAV capable to carry LiDAR and uh, aerial camera together. That day we've flown only uh, aerial imaging mission and we've flown this mission due to regulations and very small corridors as a free hand mission. So we guide it and control it. There were many restrictions in this area. We captured images with 2 to 10 millimeter GSD and we had very precise GNSS pushes position which we locked into the EXIF information. We've flown it in two separate uh, missions and in addition we've flown for another building the roof and the facade for another reconstruction purposes with a two millimeter GSD. Then we went over to combined data processing but before that we used the aerial missions first of all as a reference then we processed the UAV model in a separate step to get a good agreement on the images then we inserted control points which we took from the overall model from the aerial mission and refined then the UAV mission. Uh, we refined the camera calibration, we refined also the, the AT. Then of course we did some seamline editing to get it nicely fit into the entire model 
And then we adjusted also the surface model, which is in this area, of course, far more detailed. And then we entered in a combined output to display it in Terra Explorer. This one are some of the results. On the left-hand side, you see the 5-centimeter model of the Palais Stanislas, which has some typical, let's say, not perfectly uh, adjusted uh, facets. And on the right-hand side, you can see here the 5 millimeter model, which is very precise, very detailed. These are part of the roof of uh, Palais Stanislas. You see here the tiles reconstructed with a 5 centimeter model, which is quite smooth. And here you can see the 5 millimeter output of the UAV mission, with it, which is extremely good. Especially these roofs are very good to reconstruct because it's a very good target area. As already mentioned, we also flown a mission on a roof, which is actually under reconstruction. And you see here a point cloud with two millimeters millimeter dense, and you see all the tiles and all the details very exact. And this one was also for the control of reconstruction and the Ministry of Preservation of Cultural Heritage. Conclusion. Before we combine the different data sets, a separate pre-processing is needed. Control points have to be inserted for a good position agreement. And even the lower resolution aerial data are more robust and more stable because of the constant overlap, side lap, and the precise genus is INS, and you have a wider area to place ground control points. The high resolution data when you have sometimes just a small part of the facade captured with the image, needs good matching targets. So sometimes it's good to have also some bit lower resolution images to get a, get a good, uh, let's say, point, point matching. And the resolution, of course, increases really dramatically with UAV data. An outlook. More data even with different resolution enhance the model. So everything you put in can help to get a better and more robust model. And of course, the combination with GIS offers a wide spectrum of usage. UAV can deliver resolution for specific objects which you definitely can't capture from aerial uh, systems like uh, aircraft, maybe helicopters, uh, but you don't need that for an entire city. And there are many new applications, especially in the area of cultural heritage uh, and uh, building reconstruction. Thank you for visiting our poster and if you want to contact us, here are the details of my co-authors and me. We are happy to get in contact with you. Thank you very much.